Ephesians chapter 1. Now listen, I, gotta, I had a lot to tell you tonight, but I said we're not going to get to that tonight, but it's all right. And uh, I want to try to help you with something. We've already talked about it a lot. And uh, we showed you last week how the blessings that Ephesians is going to speak about are all contingent upon one thing, being in Jesus, Amen. being in Him. You're going to find that being in Him is what it's all about. And if you're in Him, you got all the blessings, amen. amen. All spiritual blessings are found in Christ. And anything said about Christ is spiritual blessings said about you because you become one with Him, the Bible says. You are flesh of His flesh, bone of His bone. I speak, the Bible says it's a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church, amen. That's a wonderful thing. And uh, so let's look at Ephesians chapter 1. Go, I'm going to go quickly in prayer, and that's got to be with us. God, please, God, please lead and please direct. And ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're going to do one verse tonight, not only one verse. That's verse number 4, maybe, maybe 4 and 5 together, actually. Paul. Look at verse 1. An apostle Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at, all, at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So how many spiritual blessings you got blessed with? All, all spiritual blessings. Now how do you got all spiritual blessings? Because you're in Christ. If you're in Christ, all the spiritual blessings you could ever ask for or want are in Christ. Amen. amen. You got them. Amen. You don't have to beg and plead for them. You got them in Christ. They're there for you to use. Amen. amen. They're there for you to pick up and enjoy. Amen. amen. They're just there for you. I just got to, hey, you got, it's like you got a, a big bank account. It's a heavenly bank account and it's all at your disposal. Amen. Quit living like a pauper. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking spiritual pauper here, amen. We're not talking this stuff that the people want to teach these days. We're talking about spiritual blessings. That's the best blessings, amen. That's the kind of blessings you can have and the joy you can still have when you don't have any money inside your physical bank account. Amen. <laughs> you can still smile when the world's going to start. They're talking about going through recession. Let it go through a recession. Doesn't bother us, amen. We've got the Redeemer. Matter of fact, a recession might be good for the church of God. It might actually cause people to come to think about Jesus, amen. amen. Doesn't worry me one bit. Let the stock market crash. Let it start rocking. It's all good. No dramas because I got the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, amen. amen. Glory be. Hallelujah. Amen. And as I got all spiritual blessings. I'm not bankrupt. Never will be bankrupt. <laughs> I got all I need in Jesus, amen. amen, all I need, and that's what he says here, but notice this thing is in Christ Jesus, we talked about that last week, then we come to verse number four, it says according, so look at verse three again, blessed be God, the, at, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he had chosen us. In him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. We'll read verse 6 it goes together. To the praise of the glory of his grace where he made us accepted in the beloved. Now verse 4. This is the verse we're going to look at tonight. Lord willing, we're going to cover quite a bit of it here. We'll get it taken care of. Now, some people, they read this text like this. They, take, they said, according as he had chosen, uh, 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 according, uh, look at this, says, according as he had chosen us before the foundation of the world. Yes, that's, right. they leave it that's how they read the text. Amen. According as he had chosen us before the foundation of the world. It doesn't say that. That's right. It doesn't say he chose us before the foundation of the world. It says he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Amen. Very, very important. Not, this text does not say that you were in him before the foundation of the world neither. Amen. Because you weren't. We proved that last week. Right. When you got born in this world, what were you in? You were in trespasses and in sin. You were a child of wrath. You were in Adam. You were in, in sin, in darkness. You were in the kingdom of darkness. You were not in Christ. 
You were not. The Bible's clear about that. So it cannot, cannot, it does not say and does not teach that you were in him before the foundation of the world, nor does it say that God has chosen you to be in him right. before the foundation of the world. That's how some people read it. Yeah. Some people read it like this. They read it either, either we're in Christ before the foundation of the world, or they read it that uh, he's chosen us before the foundation of the world, or they read it that he's chosen us to be in Christ before the foundation of the world. It doesn't say that either. See, people read into the text. This is the problem. That's why the Bible says you're not to add nor take away from the Word of God, lest you be found a liar. When we start adding to it and taking away from it, we mess it up. It says exactly what it says. The text says, according to chosen us, that's the group, that's the body of Christ, that's the saved in Him. So the body of Christ, the body of Christ, those in the body of Christ, He chose us, us in Him before the finished world that we should be what? Holy. Holy, without blame, before Him in love. Paul is simply saying that God has chosen us in Him, the saved, before the finished world that we should be holy, without blame, before Him in love. God chose us to be holy and without blame before him in love. You know why that is? It's this, because Christ is God's chosen one. That's right. Who's God's chosen? Jesus. Jesus Christ is God's chosen. He is. Christ is the one who Jesus Christ chose before the foundation of the world. Who was chosen before the foundation of the world? You weren't. You weren't born. Amen. You weren't even born. Yeah. But Jesus Christ was here before we found this world. Right. Now, bear with me. He is the one whom the Father chose to be holy and without blame before Him in love. And when you get in Him, the same spiritual blessings, all spiritual blessings that are found in Christ are now yours. For you are now one with him. You are now one with his body, with his flesh, with his bones. You now are chosen because you're in him. Did you get that or not really? Okay. Okay. What can be said of Jesus Christ can be said about me. Let me show you something. Ephesians 2. The simple passage of scriptures. Look at Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Verse 6. And raised us up together and made us sit together. Now look what it says. Look look at the wording. Didn't you say over there about all spiritual blessings in heavenly places? Did you see that? You know how. So here's here's your heavenly places right here. Look at verse number six. He hath raised us up together, made us sit together. Where at? In heavenly places. Where at? So where are you seated right now? According to that passage, where are you seated? You are seated in heavenly places. You guys get what I'm saying to you? You're one with Christ now. And anything said about Christ is said about you. You're in heaven because Jesus Christ is in heaven. Now bear with me. I'm going to bear with me just a minute. The text says that we're in Him. When you get in Him, the same spiritual blessings that He has... Are now yours. I showed you Ephesians 5. Let me go real quickly. Ephesians 5. Real quickly. Go with me. Real quickly. Ephesians 5. The Bible says this. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 verse 30. For we are. For we are. Ephesians 5 30. For we are members of his what? Of his what? Flesh. And of his. What God did when you got saved. He did an operation. He grafted you into the body of Christ. That's why you cannot, you will not go to hell because there's no such thing as double jeopardy in God's plan. God went to hell for you. Jesus went to hell for you and now you're one with his body. His son shall never suffer again, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews. And so you'll never suffer again because you're now one with him. I'm getting, this is a little bit deeper. As I told you, Ephesians is very deep. And now since all spiritual blessings are found in him, now, since he was chosen from the foundation because you're in him, you can be said of you that you were chosen. That's right. Because you're in him. Amen. That's why you're one with him. Can you see the blessings of being in Christ? Yep. It's wonderful. 
But you were not in Christ before the foundation of the earth. You got in Christ when you received him. You got when you got born again, when you received him, that's when you got in Christ. Where were you at before you got in Christ? In trespasses and sins. Now let me give you an illustration. The founding fathers of this land, of Australia, chose us, in Australia, before we were born, that we should live peaceably and prosperously in this land. God chose, the founding fathers of this land chose us in Australia before we were born that we should be peaceable and prosperously in this land. They did that through their sacrifice and their setting up of things. They paid a price so that you and I could enjoy the peace that you and I enjoy of being in Australia right now. Right? Surely they did. Now, let me ask you a question about that. Did they choose me? Is an individual before I was born. No, they didn't. I wasn't even born into this nation. I was a stranger from the commonwealth. I'm going somewhere. If you know your Bible, you're going to know what I'm doing. I was a stranger from the commonwealth. As such, as a stranger, I for 20 and some odd years could not say that the founding fathers of this land chose me before I was born to live peaceably and prosperously. I could not say that because I was a stranger. I was an alien from the commonwealth of Australia. That's what I was. I wasn't born in this nation. I could not say that because I did not live in Australia. I was not a citizen of Australia. I was not a part of Australia. However, this government and the founding fathers made a way. By which for me to get in the blessings. And I, Philip Ray Geddes, accepted the way. I came by the way that they made. And as such, I now, as an Australian citizen, like it or lump it, think I talk weird, think I talk strange, don't even sound like an Australian. It makes no difference whatsoever. I may not even look like an Australian, but guess what? I am an Australian. You better, if you listen to me, you'll get what I'm talking about. As such, I now am in Australia, and I now can say that I am included with this saying, the founding fathers of this land chose us, because I'm Australian now, in Australia, before we were born, that we should live peaceably and prosperously in this great land. Why? Because I chose Australia. I chose the way. Now, could I have rejected the way? Sure, I could have. And if I would have rejected the way to be in Australia, would I have been a part of the chosen to live peaceably and prosperously in Australia by the founding fathers of this great land? No, I would not. But because I accepted, now I get to get in on the blessings. He's now made me accept it in the Beloved. Because I accepted Australia, now Australia has made me accept it in this great land. (laughs) You guys get what I'm saying to you? It's very clear. Now, one more thing. Did they make me choose to be in Australia? No. They simply opened the doorway for me to enter in. You get what I'm saying? God did not make me enter into Jesus. He simply opened the doorway for a foreigner, a stranger from the commonwealth, a stranger to get in. He said, I prepared a way for you foreigners to get in. Now, you're going to see this in Ephesians. This is what Paul's talking about. The word I'm using to you is exactly the same wording that Paul uses. Praise God, Australia's called a commonwealth. It's the exact same wording the Bible uses for you becoming a Christian. And so, God opened the way. He made a way and he opened the door for me to, for anybody to come in. Some come in. And when they come in, as a, res, as a result of that, they now, because they accept it, 
they now are accepted in the beloved. I am now in Christ. I am now in the body. I am in him. Thus I have all spiritual blessings. I've been chosen to be holy and without blame before him in love. Glory be to God. It's all because I got in him. Do you guys get it? God chose for the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ. And he chose that anybody that would get in him would receive the blessings. And then in time, in this dispensation, the fullness of time, God opened the doorway. And he says, all right, there's the way. You're going to enter in or not? If you enter in, you get to be holy. You get to be without blame. You get to be before me in love. You get to be seated in heavenly places. You get to get all these blessings. But I'm not going to make you. I open the doorway for you. You want to stay an alien, a stranger? Go ahead and stay an alien or a stranger. If you want to become a citizen of a heavenly country, a heavenly country, the door's open. I know you're part of a different country. I know that you talk funny. I know you look funny. I know you probably, if you're gonna, it's going to be strange to some of the people that's been in this country for a long time, you coming in. But listen, we love foreigners. We love you. And we love people. And so I died for you. I shed my blood for you. The door's been hung at Calvary, swung wide open. Will you come and I'll accept all foreigners and you'll no longer be a foreigner. You'll be a citizen now. Amen. And you get all the blessings of the natural born. Amen. You guys get what I'm saying? You've been grafted in. You now are part of the commonwealth Amen. if you're saved. If you're not, this doesn't apply to you. But if you're saved, blessed be the Lord. You know what that means? You, 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 okay, you were born here, weren't you? Okay, I wasn't. I got just as much right as he does. <laughs> I got just as much say as he does. Can you, can you say good day, mate? Okay. He sounds different than me. <laughs> he sounds like he was born here. I don't. Much as I try. <laughs> and let me tell you, I try. <laughs> really hard just to ask my children. <laughs> It gets on their nerves sometimes. <laughs> I try really, really hard. But it doesn't matter if I fit in or not. I'm in. Amen. Now, you guys get what I'm telling you? Amen. If you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, there's some people been in for a longer time than you are. And they talk a little bit better than you talk. And they, got, they, look, like they, be, they look like they're part of being in. Some of you, you just now immigrated. <laughs> you just now took the oath. And you don't look like you fit in. You don't even sound like you fit in. But bless God, if you're in, you're in. <laughs> and nothing changes that. Isn't that wonderful? This is what Paul's teaching here. He's not trying to teach fatalism and call it by a different name. He's not teaching that. He's teaching that you and I get in on the blessings by being in Christ. And God chose a long time ago before the foundation of the earth, before the foundation of the world, He chose not us to be in Christ. He chose that all of us who would get in Christ would be holy and without blame before Him in love. Because you're in Christ. You're one with Christ. Don't take and let somebody twist this and mess it up and you miss the blessings. The blessing is that you're in Christ. And everything that he's got, you may not feel like it, you may not act like it, but you still got it. Amen. You know what? You got just as much power with God as the preacher. That's right. Just as much access to God as the most holiest saint you've ever come across. That's true. Because you know why? It's not about your holiness. It's about Jesus Christ's holiness. Amen. You're going through him. Amen. This is what this is teaching us. That's what it's teaching us. It's teaching us to get your eyes off of one another and thinking about how I'm better or she's worse or whatever the case. No, no. It's all about Jesus. Amen. It's all about being in him. This is the passage of Ephesians chapter 1. Amen. Amen.